And joining us right now is Ian Clark of Red Nation Online. Ian, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you making time to talk Gold Cup Canada versus Jamaica. How are you tonight? Oh, great. How are you doing? Hey, I'm, we're talking about the knockout stage. That's, that's great news. Absol absolutely. Let's be honest. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest. When the groupings uh, were, 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 were made and I saw who we were going up against Costa Rica and Honduras, I said, good night, nurse. We're lucky if we even get a goal. I'm floored we're in the quarterfinals. Be honest with me. When you saw the draw, did you think we'd get to the quarterfinals? Uh, nope. <laughs> I didn't. i got to be honest with you. And I, it was the same thing. You know what I mean? And you look at the locations as well. Uh, two spots, two locations that, you know, from a traveling perspective, obviously favored the Central American teams. And, uh, you know, just the history, obviously, we've had, especially with both those clubs in Gold Cup and in, in World Cup qualifying, I mean, we just haven't performed. But I guess, you know, it's one thing to take away from this tournament. You kind of wonder, you know, what's been going on for the last four years plus years. You know, you look at how much youth was on it, and you have to tip your hat off to this to this roster. Um, and, of course, Zambrano. I mean, they've up to this point, they got, they got the first part of the job done anyway. Absolutely. Ian, I don't know about you, but each and every game, uh, I went to bed content, happy, satisfied with the effort uh, they brought forth. And, and I, was, I was glad that they left everything out there each and every game. Instead of replaying the game in my mind, instead of replaying the substitutions, this for the first time in a long time, as I tweeted, uh, was nice to see. I was content with each and every game. You? Yeah, I think so. You know, I mean, let's, I'll be totally honest. I mean, the Honduras game, I thought that, that was an opportunity for a win. But with the context of us getting into the knockout stage, you know, I'm willing to leave a little bit of room there for, for what it was because what we saw before then was just so refreshing. Um, like I said, from the last two, three times we've been out there, as well as World Cup qualifying. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's, maybe that's the only, that's the only like, asterisk, but, you know, you have to look ahead to this next round. Uh, and if you, I'll let you cue that up, but I feel pretty good about it. Yeah, I do, too. Everyone's been talking about the Wonder Kid, uh, Alfonso Davies. Uh, we'll talk about him in a bit, but I want to talk about a guy that needs to start getting more, more uh, press, uh, more respect, and a name that everyone starts uh, to understand that this could be an important part of this team moving into the World Cup qualifying for Qatar in a few years. That's Scott Arfield. This guy's been a beast in the midfield. He's been a leader on, on set pieces. He's been wonderful. I, I can't say enough about him. You? I, I think anyone who saw it like this, almost pretty much the second he stepped into the side. I mean, you started feeling so much. I mean, Tiba Hutchinson has always been that heart and soul, uh, just in terms of like a classy player that can just link everything up. But to have like, a guy like Arfa, who's just work rate is just off the charts and clearly just puts his head down and gets the job done. And then you add in the professionalism, the level of play that he's at, you know, week in, week out at Burnley and in the Premier League. And, and then what he's giving to Canada, you know, a club in a country, to be honest, not a club, a country, that, you know, he really didn't have a, a really strong connection to, and he just goes out and plays like, you know, he grew up out here in Toronto. You know, Ian, you used the word work rate, and right away I thought of Lucas Cavallini. He has been unbelievable. It's great to have him back in the fold, and the way he has handled uh, the defenders uh, uh, on the last game against Honduras has been wonderful. I mean, I, I didn't like the substitution by Zambrano taking him out. This is a guy that loves to put the ball in the back of the net. He had did so much up until that point. Let him finish it. Let him finish it. Maybe he has a goal in him. He's been wonderful to watch, and I think this is a key, key part of uh, the game against Jamaica is Lucas Cavallini causing all sorts of trouble for the reggae boys. Yeah, I think, I think so too, and if we like talk about Jamaica as an opposition. I mean, from the you know maybe from a general sense, I think what most people know about Jamaica is that they're going to be super pacey up top with with you know dangerous strikers. But in the back, that's where the opportunity lies. And I think if Canada's physical on set pieces, but also just physical and open play, and a guy like Cavallini, we just know that's part of what he brings to the table, as well as you know uh, some, some technical ball that he's picked up in Uruguay as well. Um, I think that's a good recipe for us. Menjikar James uh, proved once again that he's going to be playing for Canada for a very long time. This youngster keeps getting better and better. And to me, it's great to see that because let's be honest, guys like, uh, you know, uh, Steven Vittoria, Jakovic, uh, some of the others are getting up there in years and you need some fresh young legs like a Menjikar James. Yeah, and I thought, I thought that Honduras game was a great 
uh, I don't know if a test is the right word, but that was a great game for him. I think, you know, against the opponent who's really been like the bogeyman for us, um, has caused so many problems for us over the years. And then he came in and, and was, you know, a key defender there in, in a clean sheet for us. So um, there's definitely a lot of positives to look forward for him, that's for sure. Let's talk about a guy who I've been really surprised in the position he's been put in by head coach Sam Brano. That's Michael Petrasso. I, when I first saw that he put him there, uh, I think right from the start of the tourney, I was shocked. I thought, this young man's going to struggle. This young man maybe mentally will not adapt to what his coach wants him to adapt to playing that position. But boy, oh boy, is Michael Petrasso grabbed that role, embraced it, took it on, and really, really uh, been a force back there. Yeah, and I think, I mean, I think that's going to be in, uh, you know, something of dis to discuss and a bit of a revelation for, you know, Canada supporters because, there's so many, <laughs> so many positions, especially on the back line over the last few years, where we've been saying, you know, who's going to be our future left back? Who's going to be our future right back? Who's going to be our future center back? And uh, for a guy like Petrasa, who, to be honest, I've always wondered why. I, don't, I, was, I didn't know why he wasn't playing in the last World Cup qualifying round. I mean, just in terms of as an attacking winger or, or an attacking forward. Um, but for him to convert to a right back and, you know, do pretty well at that, I think that's, again, it's just, like you said, overall, we've been talking about Anthony, just, you know, a lot of refreshing revelations we've had through these first three games. And, and what puts a smile on my face is the offensive uh, uh, options they have coming off the bench. We, we see today that the Raheem Edwards was sent back to TFC, but he was an option off the bench to St. Ricketts. Uh, I mean, this is uh, fantastic. We haven't seen this in a long time where Canada struggles to put the ball in the back of the net. It's nice actually to, to say, hey, we can go to, t uh, to, uh, to St. Ricketts. We can go to Raheem. I was thinking also of Tisho Akindale. I think he should have been here. He's another offensive threat. This is good looking for the future. Yeah, big time. And, and Jackson Hamel as well has been doing pretty good at Montreal this season. He's, you know, a big, a big strong kid. Um, I mean, it's just, it's just, well, I, I can't get over it, really, just like how. And I think, like you mentioned, like Davies is a guy everyone's talking about. And I think he's sort of been the spark for all this discussion. But you can't really leave anyone out because there's been so many young guys that have shown up and I think have, have sort of are starting to, I don't say reach their prime, but they're starting to come out now. You know what I mean? At this time. And, you know, what a time after we've, you know, failed these two cycles and haven't done well at a Gold Cup that. You know, we're going to start getting, and for this uh, timing for our new coach as well. He's probably feeling great about that as well um, for things looking forward. Not enough words to express how great the young man Samuel Piet has performed in this tournament as well, Ian. Here's a young guy that was capped at an early age. He keeps progressing. He keeps getting better. And I, I like what this kid brings to the table. I'm not afraid to put him up against anyone. No, me neither. And I think... Um, you know, I think a lot of discussion with him, too, is around, you know, where he's been playing in Spain and how he hasn't gotten heaps of minutes at, at top levels. But I think you've got to tip your hat to the way that he has conducted himself in, in Spain and in Germany and whatnot and maintain a professional level of, of play and always been ready for the call for Canada. And then, again, at this, I mean, I think he's only 22 still, right? So, I mean, he's still got plenty ahead of him. Uh, plenty of first team games ahead of him and I think for at least for Canada he's only going to get better so again as we keep you know adding on to the list of positives he's definitely one of them as well. I believe that they have accomplished what they had set out to do which was get to the quarterfinals but right now they need to block that out of their mind and say hey uh, we have a chance here to get to the semis and who knows who knows what can happen after them we saw that back with Holger Olsiek and his boys what happened and I believe they, they can beat Jamaica and the Reggae Boys. They have not looked good. Uh, it'll be a physical game. It'll be a game of speed. Uh, and, and let's not forget, uh, they're going to play Jamaica here in Toronto, BMO in September as well. So this will be a good time to play in their head that uh, we have your number in this tourney and we'll have your number in the next friendly as well and get ready the next World Cup qualifying. We will have it then. I think this is important. Yeah, I think, I think this... This game could really signify, you know, uh, maybe just you could call it a culture change. You could say a change in the direction of the program. Because if you ask me, Anthony, I think the last, you know, not even maybe not 10 years, but, you know, the last couple of cycles in Gold Cup, um, I think the story of, the, of Canada has been, you know, opportunities present, presented themselves against opponents for three points and for wins. And we've been satisfied with draws 
and, and you know, just just doing okay. And this is a really chance. It is a chance because it's an opposition, an opponent that I think we can beat, and I think we all think we can beat. And the team should go out there thinking that as well and pushing themselves to go out and do it and not just be happy that we finished, you know, out of the group. Um, the chance is there for us to get to the semis, and they should be gunning for it. Lastly, let's talk about Kyle Lahren. He has been called into the knockout stages. Look, everyone I think knows here, I'll be very transparent and open. He's a friend of mine, and he's a kid that I have a lot of time for, and he's a young man that I believe has a lot uh, still left for his club in MLS Orlando or in Europe, but a lot left in the tank for the national team Canada. I think it was the right move. I think it is an important move for him and for this team to have him uh, focus and focus solely on the national team right now. Your thoughts? Yep, I totally, I totally agree. Um, you know, not. I think you, the whole discussion around his past month has probably been uh, discussed on your show and and others. So I won't dig into that. But I think, I think this is this is the right timing, and I think this is the right situation for him to get in to be with be with his Canadian teammates, um, and to maybe go out and just and do something and perform in a way that. Hopefully it, um, you know, pushes him beyond that and, and not, to, not to put it under the carpet, but, you know, something that he can step forward from and try to, like, um, you know, make amends for it both off the field and on the field.